Well, I bring you Pentecost Sunday greetings, church. I hope you're doing well. The first few seconds of the video to, uh, today uh, for the Sunday wrap-up for today, May 31st, 2009, is a brand new look of the exterior of our worship center at uh, Clark Corners. Uh, this past Tuesday, we had some letters installed, thanks to board member Dan Ingram, uh, right at the front entrance of Suite 226, where we gather uh, together for worship. And I think it really adds a tremendous amount more visibility to our worship location, and hopefully it'll be a lot easier for people as they look around for us, if they're following the directional signs that are posted there um, just at the entrance of Clark Corners and also at uh, Clark Road and US 27. Uh, so hopefully as they pull in, they can find us a lot easier. So uh, I'm pretty excited. I mean, you know, these are letters after all. We're not talking about a whole lot of money. <laughs> But it certainly does add something as far uh, as to our visibility uh, as a worshiping community. Today is really exciting just to be able to have um, a wonderfully full house this morning, to be able to bring you this word about the power of Pentecost. Uh, I love being able to share uh, from Acts chapter 2 uh, this time every year after we have a few, East, a few Sundays in the Easter season. This is really one of the few Sundays that we really get to focus on the work and the person of the Holy Spirit especially when we talk about today being the birthday of the entire Christian church. You and I are not able to be sitting in worshiping communities in DeWitt or Greater Lansing or you name it, whether it be in a mud hut in Rwanda or an underground church in China. All of us are able to be in worshiping communities because of the Holy Spirit and His Spirit being poured out on the first 120 people, uh, the first disciples of Jesus Christ. Uh, so. Again, the Holy Spirit was poured out not for emotional, uh, ecstatic experiences, though sometimes that does happen as we worship God and the power of the Holy Spirit is poured out on the worshipers who are gathered in that place and the manifest presence of God shows up. It's certainly a byproduct, but it's not the end result. The end result and the reason why the Holy Spirit is poured out on the church is so that we can carry out mission. God has put a particular call on the Anglican mission in the Americas to do its share to reach the 150 million unchurched North Americans in the United States and Canada and to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can't do that on talent. Can't do that on talent alone. It's absolutely impossible. But when we've been empowered by the Holy Spirit, we can do these things. We can glorify the name of Jesus Christ. We can proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ that no one can come to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Uh, and also we can worship we can worship in spirit and in truth. The Holy Spirit comes down on us in a very powerful way when we call upon the name of the Lord. So, again, it's not the end game, uh, though a lot of people within the kingdom of God uh, see it, the emotional aspect of it, as being the end game. And I'm not trying to criticize that. But there certainly is a misunderstanding, especially for those of us who are within a liturgical tradition or liturgical context. We look at that and say, well, that's not for me. That's for other kinds of churches. But really, inasmuch as all Christians everywhere are called to be Easter people, people of the resurrection, there's also a, a, a part of that where we can't lose sight of the power of Pentecost. The power of Pentecost poured out on Acts chapter 2 was just not for that one time and that one space. But when we see the Holy Spirit showing up in a huge and powerful way, a lot of it having to do when God's people are in agreement. Uh, I served a bishop for many years. He used to say this all the time. He said, agreement is the place of power. And uh, we see that in a huge way in Acts chapter 2. Well, I could go on and on, but if you were in today's service, you knew that I had a great time preaching out of Acts chapter 2 and being able to share this. And I'm always so blessed when I hear uh, such wonderful feedback from folks after the service or by email or I get a note occasionally or a phone call. People say, you know, I, that scripture made no sense before, but as you explained it, I really felt like the Spirit was opening uh, my eyes or my spirit to some new revelation. Man, that really does get me excited. So I do hope you are blessed. If you missed the message today, it is now posted on our website. Just did that a second ago. And uh, again, if these video podcasts uh, are of any use to you or it's a blessing to you, do let me know. Drop me an email. Let me know that you're using them. Um, as best as I can keep up with it, I'll be happy to keep on uh, churning these things out. Well, I do hope you have a great, great week. Next week, I'm going to be talking out of uh, John's Gospel, talking about Nicodemus. And this is a great, uh, we see a great transition in Nicodemus's life where he's all from head 
And then we start seeing a transition where he sees Jesus for who he really is. And that's when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, opens the eyes of your heart, and you're never, ever the same. Well, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day, a great week in the Lord, and I hope to see you next Sunday at Christ the King. May the Lord bless you.